Duvelisibiz is a um, PI3 kinase delta and gamma inhibitor. It has dual inhibition of both isoforms, although the delta isoform is more um, greatly affected by the drug. Um, it's a, it, the PI3 kinase inhibitors, of course, have become important over the last few years. And we know that they have great efficacy, um, such as idelisib in, in diseases such as low-grade lymphoma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. What differentiates duvelisib from idelisib is that it inhibits not only the delta isoform, but also the gamma isoform. And we're beginning to realize that the gamma isoform may be very important in not only in its direct effect on in the tumor itself, but also in the microenvironment. We hope that by targeting the gamma isoform, uh, in addition to that, we, we can decrease the nurturing environment that the microenvironment gives to the cancer cells and therefore increase the efficacy of the molecule. From an efficacy standpoint, Duvelisib seems to be um, very active in patients with low-grade lymphoma. Um, the, the, uh, we're seeing more than uh, three, excuse me, more than two-thirds of the patients, approximately 70 percent of patients respond, and in some subgroups um, there's a third of patients that are achieving a complete remission. And this is in patients who've had a meeting of three prior therapies, so, so they had a lot of prior treatment, and I think that's very, um, very exciting um, indeed. From a toxicity standpoint, um, it's, it seems to be similar to, in, in our hands to what we've seen with uh, other molecules in this class, other um, PI3 kinase inhibitors. So we do see um, side effects including increase in amino transferases that occur mostly from an asymptomatic standpoint. Um, fortunately, we're able to get patients, the vast majority of patients, back onto, um, onto drug um, without any permanent um, um, uh, need to, to stop the, the medication. Other, uh, other side effects we see are, um, are diarrhea and a, and a rare instance of, of colitis. And um, this is, is less clearly understood, but also seen with the, with the, other, um, the other drugs. These, the colitis tends to occur later in the course of uh, a therapy, so sometimes after a year or more, patients are, are getting the, the colitis. And it's important for both patients and doctors to be aware of this and, and to stop the drug should they get those symptoms. So compliance with taking the medication and reporting side effects is, is uh, you know, crucial in, in clinical trials, and so we have a mechanism thereby to build in. Um, but there, is a, there could be a concern when these drugs ultimately get, um, get, get approved. We have had experiences where sometimes patients are reluctant to tell you, or even awareness by their, by their um, primary oncologist of this issue, because it's unique to this class of drugs compared to other oral cancer agents where um, they're, they sometimes get diarrhea, but it's not the colitis. And so making sure both patient and doctor are aware um, uh, of these differences um, with duvelisib as well as the ones that, uh, such as idelisib is, is really, really important. I think that's the, the, the first, first step is awareness. So currently we're studying duvelisib with um, bendamustine and rituximab as well as rituximab alone. And uh, we will be reporting um, those results um, at, at ASH this year. Um, we, you know, the, and the notion here is to try to increase the efficacy of the molecule and perhaps pave the way to using these earlier in the uh, natural history of, of, uh, of lymphoma. So bendamustine rituximab is commonly used in this country as frontline therapy for, for patients with, um, with indolent lymphoma by doing the study of uh, so phase 1b, looking at dose levels and, and, and toxicities. Um, we're hoping that, that that will pave the way to um, larger trials, perhaps earlier in the course of disease. The news is that it's changing rapidly. Our field is changing uh, every day. Um, even someone who spends their every, uh, every uh, hour every day working in this field, this very small part of oncology, um, it's, it's difficult to keep up because there's so many new drugs and so many uh, new therapies. And, um, and the good news is also that, that, that there is, there's going to be a lot of choice and it may take us a while to sift out some of the small differences in these uh, molecules, but, um, but I think it's a very bright future for, for our patients.